But what I've been focused on literally the last six months and will be focused on the next six months and the next four years is helping you fight through that. And that's what we did last session. When we sent your money back to you, over a billion dollars of your tax money back in your pocket. That's what we did when we suspended the gas tax in Georgia since March, helping you fight through 40-year high inflation and bad domestic, domestic energy supply policy. It's why working with the General Assembly, I know we got legislators here, y'all raise your hand. Thank you guys for chopping with us. That's why working together last year, they supported all these things. But we also passed the largest state income tax cut in state history. Again, designed to keep more money in your pocket. And we want to do that again in the future. That is what this race is about. Look, I've got a great record to run on. No one's done more in the country at the state level to raise awareness on human trafficking, to go after the perpetrators and support the victims of that horrible crime than our First Lady Marty Kemp. You know what? Elections are about the future. And we got to be standing for something. We got to give people a reason to vote for us. And we're going to do that. Because when we get back in January after we win this election, we're going to send another billion dollars back to the taxpayers. Because we have the excess revenue to do that. And it's one-time money. So we're not going to do like the Democrats and Stacey Abrams and build big government programs with one-time money. Because when that money runs out, you know how they pay for them in the future? Raise your taxes. And that's what they will do. We're going to go back and take our reserves that we have because we were open and Georgians were resilient and we didn't listen to Stacey Abrams and keep our economy closed. And we've got excess money. We're going to send it back to you, the taxpayer. So we'll turn in this local community and every local community across our state. But the other thing we're going to do is give a one-time property tax relief grant. I don't know about y'all, but everybody I talk to across the state, their property taxes are going up. And not every local government is rolling that money back to offset the increase. And so we're going to help fill the gap. The legislators and I are going to do this. We've already talked to them. We're going to do a one-time property tax relief grant that we believe will save most Georgians between 15 and 25 percent on your tax bill. Again, helping you fight through 40-year high inflation. But we're also going to keep putting our parents and our children first. We're not going to allow them to be indoctrinated in our classrooms. We're going to continue to make sure that we're transparent with everybody that's involved in education. We're going to make sure that we have fairness in girls sports. And we're going to continue We're going to continue to be focused on learning loss, the teacher pipeline, and a lot of other great things that I've been proposed, proposing for this campaign that we're going to do in January. But I am honored today to be able to introduce somebody that has for sure been in the fight for parents. He's been in the fight for our children. He's been in the fight for his state when it comes to economic development and opportunity. And I ain't even talked about that today. And y'all know what the statistics are. We're doing so good in Georgia. All we got to do is keep chopping and keep it up. But this guy's doing the same thing. He's wanting to bring prosperity and opportunity to all parts of his state. So I hope y'all will give a big, warm Georgia welcome to the governor of Virginia, my friend Glenn Youngkin. introduction you know I'm, I'm kind of convinced that it is so good to be a Georgia Republican today the only thing better is to be a Georgia Bulldog 
You know, that's the Georgia spirit. It's about grit. It's about hard work. And it's about winning is what it's about. And that's why we're here today. That's why we're here today because I got to tell you, you guys have in Brian Kemp a winner, and we got to reelect him Governor of Georgia. You see, that spirit of Georgia, it's under, it's under attack, just like the spirit of America is under attack. Because I'll tell you, folks, I've seen it. I've seen it in my beloved home state of Virginia. And, you know, last year we had a pretty big election there. Let me just let me just take you on a little walk back in time. You see, no more than two years ago in Virginia, we were locked tight, locked tight. We had had eight years of a Democrat governor, eight years. We were locked tight, shut down in the middle of the pandemic. Now, you didn't have that because you had Brian Kemp. We had. We had small businesses in Bristol, Virginia that were closed and we had businesses right across the street in Bristol, Tennessee that were wide open. We saw small business shut day and night. You didn't have that because you had Brian Kemp. We in fact saw crime going up in all our neighborhoods because we saw resources being taken away from law enforcement. You didn't have that because you had Brian Kemp. And we saw children locked out of their schools. Our schools didn't open until September of 2021 full time. We saw kids told that an education on a 12 inch screen was a quality education. You didn't have that because you had Brian Kemp. And so Virginians stood up. They said enough. They said enough. Teachers said enough. Parents said enough. Law enforcement said enough. By the way, the Latino community, the Asian community, the black community, people who had never voted for Republicans before said enough. Yeah. Enough. You know, folks, the wake-up call came and Virginians answered it. And we made a big statement for change and we made it loudly. Well, now it's your turn to make a big Georgia statement that we're going to give Brian Kemp four more years. You see, this is about coming together. This is about recognizing that elections have consequences. And the consequences for Virginians for a long time had been dire. And guess what? The consequences for Georgia have been great because you elected Brian Kemp four years ago. The reality, of course, is that all the pundits said that no Republican can be elected in Virginia. It's too blue. You know, we had a Republican governor, Republican lieutenant governor, Republican attorney general, Republican House, Republican Senate. I'm sorry, we had Democrats. That's my that's my that's my hopeful eye to next year when we have elections again in Virginia. But they said, no, you can't elect a Republican in Virginia. It's too blue. But they forgot to do one thing. They forgot to ask the voters. And the voters stood up and made a statement. And that is the exact same statement that we're seeing made all across America. That exact same statement that we in fact have seen Republican governors lead their states so much better than Democrat governors have. Economic growth, job creation, education, safety, all the things that people care about. Friends, this one is a pretty clear, pretty clear decision. We have Stacey Abrams on one hand and Governor Kemp on the other. So let's just be clear. When states around the country were closed and Stacey Abrams thought that Georgia should be closed, Brian Kemp had it open. 
when Stacey Abrams thought that schools should be shut and kids should be learning on that 12-inch screen, Brian Kemp had schools open. When Stacey Abrams thinks that it's her money, not your money, Brian Kemp finds a way to give it back to you because he knows it's your money. When Stacey Abrams thinks that it's time to defund police, Brian Kemp stands strong and defends police because he knows that's the key to safety in neighborhoods. And this one's my favorite. When all across America, the left liberal progressives think that parents do not have a role in their child's education, Brian Kemp stands up and says, no, we will have a parent's bill of rights here in Georgia. Now, I may not know that much, but this one seems pretty clear to me, that you all have to reelect Brian Kemp. I mean, what we've seen across our nation over the course of the last two years is the politics of Stacey Abrams and the politics of, Brian, uh, of, of Joe Biden have come together to lead our country in a place that we can't even recognize it at times. We're actually seeing America cower on the international stage and go from, go from there's peace through, peace through strength to in fact, let's let China win. We've in fact seen our border go from safe and secure to a national crisis. We've watched inflation, that silent thief that Joe Biden has let loose, stealing thousands and thousands of dollars of hard work in Georgians and Virginians and Americans' money. We in fact have seen lawlessness embraced in the name of def defunding police. Friends, the failed policy of the progressive liberals has been on display and we all know that it has failed. This is not a Republican view, this is an American view. Now, now some of you may not know that Stacey Abrams came to Virginia last year to campaign for my opponent. And when she was speaking to very small crowds, she in fact said that the biggest fear that Virginia had is if he elected Glenn Youngkin, it would become more like Georgia. Well, let me tell you, I said thank you, Stacy, because Virginians elected me and I'm proud to say that our economy is open, our economy is growing, our kids are back in school, we're returning taxpayers' money to them, Virginia's competing like crazy with Georgia in order to win economic development. And I am proud to say that, yeah, we're a lot like Georgia. <laughs> Friends, this is a moment. As I said, elections have consequences. And right now, you all have a little over you have 41 days to get this right. 41 days to do the work, 41 days to make sure that you give Brian Kemp four more years, 41 days to do the work and it takes work. I mean, last year in Virginia, we had 5,000 volunteers working the polls, 5,000 poll watchers, election officials watching the polls. We had red signs, in this case we'll have red and black signs everywhere across the state. We had more bumper stickers, more t-shirts, more hats, more volunteers than anybody had ever seen because we came together as Virginians and it's your time to come together as Georgians. I mean, that's the bottom line. So my call to all of you is plant the signs in every yard, put a bumper sticker on every car, have a t-shirt on every back, put a hat on every head, volunteer to work at the polls, Get out and knock doors, get on phone lines, and get every single Georgian out to vote. I mean, come on. Listen, I think you might as well all get red vests and walk around town. Hey, Governor, I think you need a red vest. Friends, 
the winning team is the winning team. We got to go win. And the great thing is we are on the winning side. I mean, we are the party of low taxes, of low regulations, of strong of a strong economy, of American made products. We are the party. We are the party of low inflation, of empowered liberties. We are the party of freedom. We're the party who embraces the fact that the unbridled opportunities in America lift up all Americans, all Virginians, all Georgians. We are the party where education is in place to teach our children how to think, not what to think. We are the party where parents matter. Parents matter. Friends, this is about liberty and freedom. I have to say that we Virginians feel we know a little bit about liberty and freedom. Just a smidgen. You know, it was a great Virginian who wrote those immortal words that that uh, that uh, we are all we are all given inalienable rights. And among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Friends, these these inalienable rights are not rights that are gifted by a king or handed to us by elites in Washington or Atlanta or in Richmond. These are rights that are granted to us by God Almighty. And they are ours to stand up for, they are ours to defend, but they are ours. That's what's at stake in this election. And so we have to go do the work. We have to come together in a way that we saw last year in Virginia and, we saw, and you all saw last time you elected Governor Brian Kemp, and you've got to do it again because Georgia's future is at stake. Georgia's stake in the future of America is on the ballot. Georgia's role is, yes, part of America coming together to be that shining city on the hill is on the ballot. And so, friends, let's get this done. Let's come together and do the work. Let's knock the doors, let's plant the signs, and let's make sure you make a very large Georgia statement that we are going to make sure that Brian Kemp has four more years. God bless you. God bless Georgia. And God bless the Commonwealth of Virginia and the United States of America. Thank you so much.